Game Masters here, and I have a secret to share. We've been consumed with Fizban's Treasury of Dragons as of late, and for good reason. Um, if you're planning a campaign that in, will involve dragons, or are simply wanting to place a dragon into your existing game, then the Treasury of Dragons is going to be really a, a must-have staple item for that. However, there are a few holes in Fizban's Treasury of Dragons. For example, it really does not go into detail uh, other than, well, for monks and, and rangers uh, about subclasses for other, well, classes. That's where Fizban's Vault of Draconic Secrets comes into play. The Vault adds 13 subclasses. Treasury of Dragons only has a scant 7 new spells and 13 magic items, whereas the Vault of Draconic Secrets adds 11 new spells and 10 new magic items. This book is not designed to replace this book. It's simply more. Made by Splinterverse, the artwork within this is insanely good. And this is a shot of the credits. I really want to give a shout out to the artists that put their hard work into this book. And the table of contents, you can see all the really cool things that are featured in this particular book. But let's explore what's in the book, and I'll provide a link in the comments below as to where you can actually get the book. So first off, subclasses. Artificers, they get some great amount of love in this book uh, in the form of a subclass called Gemologist. In essence, this subclass can use gems to their fullest potential and can recognize the latent magic that resides within those gems. Um, a third level gemologist gains gem enhanced spellcasting. Uh, you can basically take a gem, use it to augment a spell's overall effect. So you could potentially uh, double a spell's duration or re-roll some damage dice. Uh, change the damage type of a spell. Um, so, for example, if you were going to cast Lightning, you could change that to Acid. Or you could even cast a spell without having to wave your arms or cite any verbal components. You have Path of the Wyvern for Barbarians. This is a barbarian that strives to have the raw power and fury of a wyvern. One of the abilities you get at third level is Sting of the Beast. When you rage, you can deliver a wyvern-like poison, dealing additional poison damage with your melee weapon. Now, keep in mind, I'm just barely scratching the surface here. The subclass for druids is Circle of Scales. This is one that just makes too much sense. Okay, so a druid of the Circle of Scales will seek out a location where a dragon once was, perhaps an abandoned lair, or maybe where a mighty dragon was slain. And this druid is going to look for scales, talons, or other remnants of that dragon, and they'll use those objects to focus power. One of the powers they get is at level 6 in dragon form. The druid can, instead of transforming into a beast, can partially transform into a dragon. They gain the following benefits. Nah, spoilers, you got to get the book to find that out. Rogues get a subclass called Gem Stalker. They have a strange uh, obsession with gem dragons, and excel as information gatherers. When you look over the features of this subclass, you can easily see a connection between it and the abilities that a gem dragon has. The rogue gem stalker can move things with their mind. Now, how handy is that going to be for a rogue? Being able to move objects with your mind. Of course, there are more things that the gem stalker rogue can do, but you'll need to get this book to find out. Now, real fast, if you're enjoying this video and like to see more like it, please attack that like button. That helps to get this video out in front of more people, and I would genuinely appreciate that, and I'm genuinely going to thank you for that. So, thank you. Great Worms in Fizban's Treasury of Dragons are described as being only second in challenge rating to the aspects of Tiamat and the aspect of Baomut. In Fizban's Vault of Secret, Warlocks get a subclass called the Great Worm. The Warlock has made a pact with a Great Worm. Perhaps the Great Worm recognizes something in that Warlock, or perhaps to an even stranger extent, the Great Worm simply enjoys being seen as a god by this Warlock and just likes being worshipped. For however the connection happened, the Great Worm has given a portion of its elemental power to that Warlock, even providing the ability to fly to their most devoted followers. 
Subclasses aside, you also have two new Draconic-based backgrounds. A way to help explain how your character has a connection to dragons and Draconic abilities. You have Dragon Hunter and Dragon Tamer. A Dragon Hunter, as the name kind of spells out, uh, hunts dragons. And perhaps you got into it because a loved one was killed by a dragon, or perhaps you got into it simply because of the riches that can be found within a dragon's hoard. Whatever the reason, you have a hunger and a thirst to hunt dragons. And as such, you have a vast knowledge of the different types of dragons that exist and how to track them. A dragon tamer is a bit of an opposite of the hunter. While you still seek them out, you're doing so in hopes of befriending them. Uh, you recognize their power and abilities and simply want to engage them in a positive way. Use them to your advantage, but you want to be friendly with them. Now, both of these backgrounds are more for flavor. Uh, yes, there are some features that you gain, but you know when you step into a world in which dragons exist, the least you can do is uh, it tastes good for that dragon when it eats you. Spells. Who doesn't love a good spell? I can't share all of them with you. Um, I mean, you can go back and check the table of contents at the beginning of the video to see what all their names are, but I will share a couple. Draconic Might. This is a fourth level transmutation for Paladin, Sorcerer, Wizard. Uh, you touch a creature and bestow it with power and presence of a dragon. The target gains advantage on strength, constitution, and charisma checks and saving throws. The target also gains a plus two to AC, four D6 temporary hit points, and plus two bonus to melee damage rolls. Fell the Greatest Foe. This is a third level transmutation for Artificer, Cleric, Paladin, Ranger. You touch a willing creature. Until the spell ends, the creature gains a bonus to weapon damage rolls based on the size of the target of its attack. Plus two against large creatures, plus four against huge, and plus six against Gargantuan. And there are five new feats. One is Psionic Shielding. You have trained in Psionic Protection, gaining the following benefits. Your Intelligence, Wisdom, or Charisma score is increased by one, and you gain a plus one bonus to armor class while you aren't wearing armor. Magic Items. Whoa, some of my favorites. You have 10 new magic items, as well as three new horde magic items. The Cloak of Scale Kind. This is a rare, wondrous item that requires attunement. It is fashioned from a rainbow of dragon scales and gives you plus one bonus to armor class and saving throws while you wear it. You also gain advantage on charisma checks. Drake's Blood Amulet. This could be an uncommon, rare, or very rare item that requires attunement. It is an amulet in the shape of a clear drake claw filled with blood. When you wear it, you gain an attack and damage bonus to unarmed strikes and natural weapons determined by its rarity. Uh, plus one for uncommon, plus two for rare, plus three for a very rare. When you use the attack action, you can make an additional attack, but only once until the next dawn. Now, the horde magic items. These are so powerful, I don't think I could do them justice by describing them here. You'll just need to get the book to see exactly what they can do. But what I can state is that if you manage to find all three in their legendary form, you'd be pretty close to being unstoppable. Of course, you also have new draconic gifts. Uh, this is something that is perhaps passed down to an ancestral connection. Maybe a great, great, great grandfather was dragonborn or your family has a connection to the little red dragon who lived down the lane. And when it passed away, it bestowed upon you a gift of its essence. One of the new gifts is elemental control. You can use the elemental power of a dragon, allowing your weapon attack to do 1d4 bonus damage with that damage associated with the dragon that provided this gift. So a red dragon would give you fire. There's a nifty table on draconic trinkets. Uh, you'll want to get your d100 out for this. There are several on here to roll for. And introduced in Fizban's Vault of Draconic Secrets are dragonlings. Dragonlings are dragons that are stuck in pre-wormling state forever. They're ripe for being tamed and kept as a familiar, or they can simply be there as an adversary to go up against the party. Dragonlings are a pretty neat tiny little dragon. While stat blocks in this book are provided only for two of them, green and gold, 
Uh, any of the dragon types can also have corresponding dragginglings. You just adjust the stat block accordingly. Fizzman's Vault of Draconic Secrets provides several adventure hooks. But what's cool is that they're broken down into groups of hooks. So if you're running a game as a DM and you have a player that is playing an artificer, gemologist, there's an adventure hook specific for that. Likewise, if you're playing that Warlock Great Worm subclass that we talked about earlier in the video, there's an adventure hook for that as well. But wait, there's more. There are several adventure hooks for specific backgrounds, and even adventure hooks for some of the new spells introduced in this book. Want to explore dragginglings in more detail? Yep, adventure hook exists for those as well. So I'm going to leave you with this question. If you cross paths with a mighty dragon, and it was willing to bestow upon you its power and essence, what type of dragon would you most want it to be? Let me know in the comments below. And until next, our paths cross... May your dragonling familiar not chew up your favorite pair of magic boots.